So here we are. It's another glorious afternoon uh, when it's absolutely glorious because where am I? I'm down in Diga once more. I'm sitting at the Diga Combined School with the principal, Mrs. Tessa Charles Cauldron. And we've been doing some stuff at the school for a little while, developed this relationship with the school. I just wanted for us to just talk a little bit about what we've been doing, how it came about, where we're headed, what we're aiming to have. I'm going to start out from my end. Mm -hmm. I have always had a deep concern for development. I'm involved in tourism. I see a lot of what happens abroad, what happens in some of the other Caribbean islands, what happens in North America in particular. And I always feel like, why can't we have some of the same things here, some of the same possibilities? And I think that by and large, it's about having the will to make it happen, as opposed to just taking a defeatist attitude. So when I got introduced to this school by one of the teachers from Fongia Libre, where I've been doing some work, who said, Kirk, these school supplies that you have gotten in. In fact, no, she wanted supplies for her class. And I said, I want to meet with the principal, just talk to the principal, share this is what I'm doing. And when I reached out to you, I was blown away. I mean, just the warmth that you exuded just from the telephone and your openness and your willingness to be a part of this giving forward. I, I was blown away and then even more so, further blown away when I came to the school and I saw what, what, what the whole school embodied, what you embodied as principal, the way it was with the teachers and the students. And I wanted to take this time just to do this little bit of an interview and get some thoughts and feedback from you and then we'll delve into some deeper stuff. So, all yours. Yes, Kirk. I believe now, um... I think perhaps we were destined to meet under these circumstances. There you were trying to reach out, trying to develop community, develop school, develop country. And I had made it a few weeks prior, I had made it a goal to improve the profile of my school, to put ourselves out there a little more. That's how I saw us being somewhat more independent, reaching out, getting more help, and not being reliant solely on the Ministry of Education. And I was out there, let's say, hungry for that kind of assistance, that kind of support, and there you were. So yes, when I met you, and the teacher had told me he was working with a group to provide supplies to the school, so that was, to me, that was such a blessing. So I welcome that. And of course, I, you were willing to meet me. I, I was open to that. And where have we gone since then? <laughs> We've done quite a lot. We've developed a relationship, I'll, I'll say. I see you as a stakeholder, not from the immediate community, but it really doesn't matter. We're St. Lucians and we're looking out for the best for our children. And, and I see you as being very supportive in that venture. We have, you've brought tourists into our school, our students meeting, um, the tourists are interacting with them firsthand, having these one-on-one -on -one interactions. So that's, that's another blessing coming from our relationship. The fact that we are now talking about developing a long-term relationship, that's how I see it, from where we're going now. We have a project that I'm very excited about. Um, the playground coming around and I'm trying to see, not trying, at this point we have involved our students in it, in, in the project. They're making it an academic project. They, it's well integrated in our curriculum now. So I'm excited. This first phone call has taken us quite a long way and with the, the, the playground coming around, it's not a one-shot thing. We'll have to work with it you know, in maybe increments or over time. And that's why I see it as something that will continue to go on. Okay, lovely. So thanks so much for that, Tessa. 
Um, and gosh, we've touched on so many things just in this small breath, but I think that that's just so epitomizes the relationship that we've developed. I am excited for it as well, because I look, I look at the students, their, their verve, their vigor, their, their soft ambitions, their, their more expressed ambitions, even like with, with, the, with the, the students that we worked with today. Uh, it's very interesting. It was very interesting to see them to a certain extent, a little bit reserved, a little bit shy, but I am sure that by the time we get into it a little deeper, then God, all of their yes. vibrance, etc., will shine through. And I think that this is so, so, so important because very often we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. But this exposure just takes us to a whole nother level. Let me ask, coming back to the idea of the playground, how, just take us down the road of where did the idea for the playground originate? Actually from the students. Wow. I remember interacting with a class. It might have been the same class over two years. At the beginning of the year, I go in, have this conversation. What goals do you have? What would you like to see at your school? How could we make school better? You know, just throwing down these questions at them. And they, I remember on two occasions hearing a playground. And it bothered me. It triggered something because, and it was the boys saying a playground. And you know, boys are energetic. They want to run around. They want to play. They want to use that energy and, and I kept on thinking but how do we get you a playground this is something that we can dream about for now and that is that seed was planted in my head by the students and in my head I wanted to make it a reality so when you came around and started asking, what do we want for our school? What is it? This, this, was, the, this was already there. I think one of the first things I said, I must have said was a playground because I wanted to make this a reality for the children. Yes, we have space, they're running around and playing, but I wanted to, them to be, according to one of them, one of them said they wanted it more advanced. I wanted them to have a different kind of experience, an improved experience, have some of what they see on, on TV and it's know that it was not too far, too far removed from them. Even if we're in rural Chozel in a small school that you are deserving and you can have, you can dream and dreams will become true. So this is me trying to make school life as enriching as possible for my students. Nice. And I am excited at how far we've gotten because again, just like you were speaking about that initial interaction that you, just a couple of weeks before, had said that you want more publicity, and suddenly there the publicity appeared yes. in the form of Kirk Elliott, <laughs> you know, and all of the excitement that he brings. And now, speaking to the playground, and again, that conversation we had where I asked, what would you like for the school? And it's interesting because serendipity acting up again or coming to bear again because it just so happens that I have been doing this program called I Am Lucian which really is what is the essence of being Lucian and how can we tap into that essence to help us become the best that we can be and me having diaspora heavily involved you know always active in in the webinars and putting out there that, hey, I have a desire to help the Diga Combined School build a playground. And folks just responding and saying, yeah, count me in. Let's step, get a GoFundMe started. Hats off and thanks to Ronnie, right, my friend from many years ago, whose idea it was for the GoFundMe. And then the next webinar I got on, she was like, what has happened to the GoFundMe? reaching out and sharing with her that, you know what, we are planning this from the ground up. We want to have all of the costings involved. And then from there, we can say this is what we need to raise. 
Lo and behold, she introduces me to her husband, who is an engineer, and they speak about putting a team together and coming down to build a playground. So it's, it's, I, I think that it's just so amazing to really never limit your dreams. Dream, and if you're going to dream, let's dream big. Right. Because the worst that can happen is that it doesn't come true. true. But the truth is, I just think that by dreaming, one then can will that dream into existence. And I think that this really is what we're doing. Yeah. Now, I want to ask another question, Tessa. Speaking about the playground, I want to speak to the deeper impact of it. What do you see as being the benefits of having a playground? And the benefits in both the short term mm -hmm. and also in the long term, as you think of childhood development, development of character and all those sorts of things. Can you speak a little bit towards that in your role as an educator, as a principal, as watching the lives of young persons growing into adulthood? Yeah. The playground, I believe, will be adding a very important element to our, to school, to our school life. I'm hoping that it will get the students excited about coming. We know they're playful. I hope they'll, they'll be excited to be at school. I like the idea that they will have different spaces to explore and have different experiences in. They will be able to negotiate with their friends and have their own conversations, their, their dialogues. They will build and nurture the relationships in their different little spaces. The, the image I have in my mind is the swings in one place, the, the monkey bars in another, and, and children developing healthy social skills. Also, I w considering the emphasis on mental health, and we, we tend to overlook children's mental health, the well-being of, of, the, of, of the children in that respect. This is, I want to be able to provide that space for them where they can relax in that, sort of, in that sort of way, where they're going to make a very conscious effort to decide, I want to swing. And why? Why, why this over this? Instead of everybody now wanting want to go and play football, everybody wants to do the same thing. I want them now to have options. Why do I want to do this instead of going and play football or, or cricket? Why do I want to be there with my friends? With, and, and with, they, they, they have choices with one or two or three or a group of them. And how will that help me? We will have options also as, as, the, as teachers for our lessons. The playground, the outside environment is not just bare anymore. So the teachers, I believe, will be able to make use of, of the facility in, in, in different ways. So the classroom will not just be limited to the four walls or just coming under the mango tree or outside. It, it will be adding to, to our lessons, to yeah. what teaching and learning is. Yeah. So all in all, I simply want to make school fun, make children excited about coming to school, and them learning and not always being learning in a structured environment. I, want, I love to see children learning from one another. So I believe the playground will, will assist in, in, in these ways. Okay, great. So thanks so much. What a marvelous project that we have, we have embarked on. Absolutely. And, I'm excited. And yeah, I am as well. Um, I've, I hope that what this little exchange that we've had ha has really helped to, sh to showcase, one, the potential, two, what can come out of dreaming. And then I think at a deeper level, St. Lucia's growth developmentally. We, we are at what I consider a very pivotal point in our development. Crime is becoming now a greater area of concern. While it hasn't reached alarming proportions, it certainly is at a point 
for concern. Mm -hmm. And no child comes out and, and, and even envisioned that 15 years down the road, they are going to become what some in the society has become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And school plays such a pivotal role. It's where children spend the majority of their awake hours, mm -hmm. right? So that if we can have this project come about, in fact, not if, but as this project comes about and we start to see the impact and we, we monitor and document it along the way and we look at the positive impact, this can be a beautiful model that we can take forward, that can go further within our education system and really help to shape us in a proactive way as opposed to being reactive to crime. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about the diaspora impact and contribution because what I have found is from my interaction on the I Am Lucian program, diaspora so want to lend a helping hand. And in a lot of instances, they find themselves stymied because of the bureaucracy, the system, the this, the that. And what I think is beautiful is that we've embarked on this project almost as a community self-help initiative. And we look forward to, to the larger authorities getting on board and supporting, etc. But I think of government like a big ship in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And that big ship takes time to move, to Absolutely. turn, Absolutely. right. So I think that what we're doing is we're the forward guard. Right. We're the ones that are going out in the little speedboats mm -hmm. and really navigating the waters and really being nimble, right? But understanding and recognizing that we are part of a greater whole. Yeah. And now coming back in and we can bring back in the reports and then we will see that whole shift, yeah. right? So really excited for this. Want, want to thank as well, want to thank those in the diaspora who will assist. Want to thank those at home as well who will assist and support because with this project that we're doing, we spoke about Kudme. And it's interesting, on the last webinar, we had on the Ambassador of Diaspora Affairs. And he was speaking to Kudme. Mm -hmm. So when I brought up the idea of this project and I said, oh my God, it fits in so ideally. Once again, serendipity raising its gorgeous head in this instance. So just really looking forward to how we, we grow and develop this and just always saying the best is yet to come. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I will keep dreaming. Right. I have images in my head of what this place will look like. Yeah. I have images of my students running from one spot to another, excitedly coming to school, being excited to play with their friends and meet their friends, walking around, observing them. It's an experience that I did not have. And, and as a matter of fact, we do not have such, such recreational areas, not even in the communities. I don't yeah, know of any in yeah, Chazelle. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe we would, in Chazelle, we have to go as far as possibly we could to have such a facility. Wow. In fact, we have taken our students out right. there to have that experience. Right. So to know that they will have it at school, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. it's mind-blowing. Lovely. Well, looking forward to making that happen and for us to continue doing magical things. So, <laughs> yes, beautiful partnership. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I hope that you have really enjoyed this sharing between the principal and myself, just talking about uh, how this relationship developed and what it's grown to, where it's headed. Hope this has given you a deeper appreciation of the possibilities yeah. and looking forward to your continued support and involvement. So until the next one of these sessions, here's saying, Kirk out, boom. <laughs>